Hello, welcome. Welcome one and all. Thank you for joining us. We have quite a crew coming in here today. Um, welcome to, if you could put yourself on mute or maybe um, you could help with that, Jessica, make sure everybody yeah. comes in on mute so we don't get a lot of noise, but thank you. We're expecting a lot of people today. We had over 300 show up or sign up. We're expecting, you know, somewhat less than that to show up because a lot of people want to get the recording. Hey, Chris Taylor, good to see your face there. Yeah. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're, we're, we're happy to be here with you on world values day. Um, and happy you're joining us. We want to talk about reconnecting with the values we need most now um, and how to create a world where everyone thrives. And we're really looking for your wisdom and your discussion and bringing this into the room. We do have quite a few folks, so we're going to need to be um, uh, respectful and, and be muted when we need to be muted. But if you, if you want to type in the chat right now, um, let us know, you know, where you're coming from, uh, what's, what city you're in, um, and say hello to everybody. So um, uh, welcome. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Tom Rausch. I am the um, Director of Consulting at Barrett Value Center. I'm relatively new in the role, joined the company full-time in April, but have been working with BVC tools and uh, assessments since 2008. And I'm a, I'm a huge believer in um, measuring values and the importance of what it can do. And that's what we're going to talk about today is what, what are the important values we, we need now? Um, the, uh, again, thank you for joining us, Manitoba, Canada, Cape Town, Madison, Wisconsin. Who's in Madison, Wisconsin? I love Madison, Wisconsin. That's where I, Maria, I went to a graduate school there and lived there, a, a beautiful town. Uh, thank you all for coming. One thing you can do right now um, is we're letting people come in and people are saying hello is if you have a, a smartphone or you just want to open up another browser, we're going to start with a fun Mentimeter. I don't know if you've ever experienced menti.com. Menti.com. Enter code 8086-3262. And let's start off with a, a fun Mentimeter. And the question um, we're going to ask you is, what does the world need now? And we have in here some ideas uh, that we've posted that we think what the world needs now is everyone thriving as opposed to personal self-interest. We think we need a sustainability obs obsession rather than a growth obsession. We think we need both and thinking rather than either or thinking. But these are just our ideas. We would love to hear what your ideas are. So I'm going to pull up that menti and uh, see what you guys are having to say about this. So go to 8086.32, and we should be, yeah, there we're starting to get some, some answers. You're getting 100 points. You get to spread across our ideas. We also have in here an other. If you think that triple bottom line accounting or future generations, uh, none of these float your boat, put in other, and maybe when we uh, break out here. We'll have some discussions about what else do you think is important. So um, what we've got here so far is we're seeing everyone thriving, well-being and fulfillment. Boy, that's a that's a hot topic today, isn't it? Right. Um, you get 100 points. You get to spread them out however you want. And then you hit enter and your votes will come up here. So uh, what are we doing here? People are like the well-being and fulfillment, uh, which is Pretty close to thriving, I think, in many ways. A, a little bit of different. Cooperative solution finding is, is getting a lot of votes. Purpose beyond profit. I think we have a few um, purpose folks, purpose-oriented folks on this as well as value. Again? value yeah, Tom, oriented. can you go back to the code so people can, the few that oh, are Oh, sure. The code is on the top. The code is on the top of the page here, 8086-3262. That's menti.com, 8086-3262. Hello, Kathleen Seeley. Good to see you here. Boy, I'm seeing a lot of my favorite people on this call. So, uh, and Joanna's here too. Hi, Joanna. One of our newer trainees. Fantastic to have you guys here. Really appreciate seeing you. And uh, it's interesting. We got one other 
so far. Only one for the old triple, one percent for the old triple bottom line accounting, right? Which was the old view of sustainability, or maybe the traditional view of sustainability. One humanity, everyone thriving. I see the the. I guess the horse race was between everyone thriving and uh, employee well-being and fulfillment, and purpose beyond profit. Love it cooperative solution finding rather than arguing with everybody, right? Arguing with each other. Fantastic. Both and thinking. Lovely. Awesome. So this is going to be our discussion today for the rest of our time together is what do we really need to, um, what does the world need now? What do we all need right now? So uh, while you can continue your voting, we're going to share this out when we share out the recording. Um, but I do want to, you know, get some other voices in the room here soon. So let's let's move on to let me see if I can get my correct screen back up, which is this guy, I believe. Good. So now we're going to move in. Now that we've we've shared our ideas about. What, what we think the world needs now is we want to turn to the question that World Values Day is asking of us. So the entire theme in all of the presentations and all the writing that is happening today on World Values Day is how can we use our values to reconnect with one another? So what we're going to do now is, is get into an intimate conversation. Jessica, if you could um, start setting that up, I want, I, we'd love to have, uh, people in groups of three. We've got 92 participants. So um, um, if you could put everybody into a group of three, and if we have an overlap, let's go into a group of four. We want to put you in triad discussions and give you 10 minutes to discuss this question. How can our values help us reconnect with one another? Then we'll come back out and do a large group debrief. So um, are you ready to make that happen, Jessica? I believe so. I was just letting one last person in. So give me just okay. a moment. So um, just introduce yourself quickly. And then if you can get into this discussion, that if you're, there's three of you and you got 10 minutes, it's about three minutes a piece. What, uh, how can our values help us reconnect with one? Again, Jessica. Thank you. So let's hear what people are saying. Who has a big takeaway? Just I'm going to trust you to come off mute and speak into the room because there's too many of you to see on the screen and manage anyway. Who's willing to step forward and give us give us some feedback of what, what you were talking about? I will. Thank you. So I had the great pleasure of being with Nico, and we had a partnership for all that juicy time. So we came up with some interesting insights and agreed that um, uh, how can our values reconnect with one another is really, first of all, to create the safety to disagree. If I can disagree with you, then I feel safe to show up wholly and fully. I don't have to pretend to be something I'm not. And that perhaps some organizations are missing steps with this big vision, but really not rooted in the ground, sort of high aspirations, but no practical sort of um, interaction specifically between generations um, and between generations to have um, maybe a values mentorship that was Nico's idea that would be really interesting to have values mentorship but teach people really active listening as opposed to uh, sharing a position just really engaging from a listening space and um, and then we had a really interesting conversation about why always more every year? And uh, I had shared that I just, I'm just i just taking sort of a beat for the next three months to kind of let new insights come. And Nico shared that his wife had the same insight at a retreat that she's at. So really kind of stepping back to move forward. So that was our summary. It was a pleasure, Nico. I, lo I love that, Kathleen. That That's beautiful. And, you know, I wonder if that isn't part of what the blessing of, of COVID has been for us all is to is to encourage us all to think about taking a step back uh, and and think about those values. Who who uh, who else would like to share that? That's beautiful. Who has maybe a slightly different shade on what you discussed there? Marianne? Yes, 
I really liked how we were talking about um, the corporate, the corporation organizations using values and in their mission. And Uma brought up an excellent point that our mission statements, our purpose statements that are all beautiful on the wall need to begin first with the values that our organization believes in, lives in, works in, and, and will actually move forward in and build our mission statements, our purpose statements on the values because it's the values that gives it the leg to stand on and move forward. Yeah, that's so, so, so important, Marianne. Um, Who else? Could, Go ahead. May I add a, a, a thought to that? I was talking with uh, Belinda in South Africa and uh, Patricia in Brazil, and what we recognized was that um, we might use the same words, but they're culturally mediated. So, you know, what the meaning of, say, harmony is in, in one culture means something quite different in another, and that we make a lot of assumptions about what those things might be, and it takes a lot of dialogue in order to come to an understanding of how we're using the terms that describe our values. And when that comes together, it's absolutely wonderful, but it's hard work getting there. Yeah. Well, it's at least time consuming work, right? Because <laughs> yeah. you have to have, you have to have the dialogue, Stephen. You're so, you're so right. I was having a discussion with Alan Williams, who's one of the, the, forces behind world values day and we were we played his card game he's got a wonderful card game where you just select a value and as we dove into a pretty simple value of excellence where we went with it was just got so deep and so rich depending upon how you framed you know what do you mean by excellence so it's a great point it also came up in our discussion any other um insights from that first question yes uh this is bill mckinnon uh, Edgar Fleury and I were on together, so it was the pair of us. And there was something that he said early on about authenticity that triggered a discovery for me. I'm a former psychotherapist and often operated with the constructs of conscious, subconscious, and unconscious, and realized that in my training and in my ongoing uh, growth as a therapist, I operated out of those three levels. And what I had to do in my own work to, was to come up with what were the values that drove me that at a subconscious and unconscious level, and how could I mitigate those? Uh, because it was important if I was going to be helpful to somebody else. And realizing that it's the conscious expression of the values that is so important if I've done the work at the earlier levels. Uh, at the subconscious and unconscious levels to pull those into my own awareness and explore them. And the comment just preceding me about how hard the work is at an individual level to me, that was, that was very hard work, but very yeah. worthwhile. Yeah. That, that's a brilliant ad, Bill. Thank you for that because um, you know, at, at Barrett, we, we have an understanding of values as like the universal human needs. And often we're driven by, you know, particularly in times of where we're feeling unsafe, right? Which you, right. COVID, has, COVID has done that for us too, course, right? right? And if we're unconscious about uh, safety, we're not feeling, it's going to, we're going to drive, we're going to be, be behaving in ways that might not match the values we think we want to act from. Yep. Well, Mar I agree Mar with you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Marina, thank you for putting up your, uh, your hand. Oh, we can't hear you. Come off mute if you can. Um, hi there. Hi. So I'm polite for once. I normally just speak up, but there's so many of us. <laughs> so actually, I, I was going to build on what Stephen said, that dependent on where we come from, our journey, which has so many different lenses, the words that we use may be different, but universally, the fun fundamental things that are important to us are same. And then what I also said is, um, um, we, there were three of us, the conversation was how really values help us to firstly understand ourselves, understand ourselves. First understand yourself before you seek to understand somebody else or seek to be understood, you know, and so, 
uh, then we also said, well, okay, maybe it's true that we are over intellectualizing what values mean. Mm. And we really need to simplify it because we are professionals in this sphere and we love the words, et cetera, or we get lost in the jungle of words. It's, you know, and it reminds me of what Richard said. So what is, what's, what do you value? It's I, what makes you happy? Simple yeah. as that. And then if you can then speak to someone and says, you know, this is what makes me happy. What makes you happy? Yeah. That's a connection. That is a deep connection. Yeah. So it's simple. It's easy. It's hard. It's deep. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's all, all of these things, right? Yeah. All this. <laughs> all I love this. it. I love it. We have time for one more share before we go on to the next question. Um, I'd, I'd love to share. Our group had such a great discussion. Um, we kind of looked at from a broad perspective, how divided communities and, and people are and how when we share not only our values, and I love what Marina said around framing how, how to talk, have that simple conversation, but also like the experience and the, and the stories that help shape our values, that really helps to build more empathy and compassion for, for people across the divide. So from kind of a divide perspective on a broad broad perspective and then we also talked about organizations and um, Ahmed in our group was sharing in his organization how they really espouse really human values of togetherness and, and connection and how because of that you know he, he and the people that work there are flourishing personally and driving the company forward and innovating and so the really really um positive impact when you truly do bring human values into your organization. And then just from a personal perspective, um, how values have been helpful to us to be at our, at our best. So kind of echoing Marina on like, when you really understand your values, you're a better leader and you're able to live a better life. So it was uh, yeah, great conversation. Yeah. That, that's a beautiful share, and I'm, I, I would love to hear from more people, but we, we, we only have an hour together, and I want to get in at least this other question. I think it, was, it really was a great segue, if you will, is like we, the point you made about how to connect with our own values and how to connect with each other and have those dialogues or to get really deep in it, and particularly at this time when there's so much division in the world, right? And that, that's what we're talking about with world values is how do, how do we reconnect? And it's easy to reconnect with the, the, the ones you love and the ones who agree with you and the ones who are on the same side of whatever argument you're having. But, you know, what could we do differently? The next question I'd like us to each grapple with, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep you in the same groups. Um, and Jessica, maybe you can watch. And I know a couple of people put in the chat here that they had to drop off. So if, if anybody, let's not leave anybody stranded and maybe move them to another group if we need to. But yeah. we'd like to, like to put you back in the same groups and discuss this. What is one thing you can do differently, personally or in your organization, to put into practice what we all just learned from each other? So this is getting to that commitment of what am I going to do differently later today or tomorrow? So um, I'm going to paste this in the chat because somebody pointed out to me that they came in late and they didn't have the question last time. So let me see if this. I would love to hear, and I guess because we're recording and we're having people come back in, uh, those of you who are back on time could be the first ones to share. Who's willing to share? And you can, if you do the little raise your hand thing, you do pop up to the, uh, if you raise the digital hand on here, you pop up to the top of my screen. But we had some interesting conversations on what we might do differently, uh, personally and in our organizations to reconnect. I'd love to, to hear some, let's get down to some practical ideas. What are we going to do differently later today or tomorrow? Who's willing to share? Yeah, I would be happy to share if I may. Thank you, Nico. Yes, I had the honor to be again with Kathleen and Pamela joined us uh, for the second part. And the essence of what we found is just really it's about safety. Um, and uh, Pamela mentioned about peer pressure. And that's so difficult uh, to feel safe to share within the team. And uh, the commitments I, I did is in my next team meeting, uh, I would really open the floor and do the exercise we just started with to introduce and 
to talk about values and understand that um, the difference um, of individuals. And then Caseline introduced a process which she has. So if, if you don't mind, I make some advertisement for you, Caseline. So she, and I love it really, and I, I learned so much. So she said, um, basically, it's all about trust. So she has a gradient of trust that you start the meeting. Then it's about understanding the growth mindset and what you can change, which leads into truth and openness. Uh, and then you have a choice and it's about 100% accountability or responsibility. Please correct me if I missed anything, Caitlin. But I think just this this flow is would be so powerful uh, just to create that safety. And that, I think that was the essence is uh, of everything we, we shared is feel safe to to disagree and feel safe to, to talk about your, val uh, your values. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Kathleen, did he get that right? Was that a decent commercial? He's a thumbs up from Kathleen on that. Yeah, it's all perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so what you guys are talking about there is uh, just a, a new structure or holding to a structure that's got psychological safety built into it, that's got the openness to share can be so, so helpful. So that was a beautiful share. Thank you, both uh, Nico and Kathleen. Yeah, if, if I may add uh, one tweak, you need time for that. Yeah. So, and I gave the example because of Corona, we had the opportunity to talk three times a week in a breakfast meeting, like 30 minutes with the whole team. But there was only one rule. We were not allowed to talk about business and you cannot believe how much uh, safety was created and understanding of the individuals during six months. So I know people better than I delivered full week of training with them. But after these sessions, I know them better. Uh, yeah. and, and then there is no peer pressure and you can talk about that. Yeah, it Thanks. creates that, that human to human connection that's so important and uh, so valuable for opening people up and getting people more deeply. I think when we when we go slow like that to understand and create that space, that speeds up all the work and then makes all of the change and the, the many balls we've got to juggle be so much easier. Thank you for that, Nico. Patrice Lynn, my good friend, who's visiting uh, visiting Columbus, Ohio, I understand we might get together soon. So good to see you. What, uh, what do you have to share? Thank you. Yes, I'm excited to see you. Uh, I'm excited to be here. So that's good. First start. Well, Daniel and I were together and he showed, uh, told a great story about how he worked with Wix, the computer company, the website company. <laughs> and how they just grew so fast. And then when people would leave, they didn't understand why they were leaving. And he said, of course, now he's working at Barrett. And so he has access to the tools and he's like, oh, if I would have known then what I know now about the culture, like we, they didn't have a defined culture. They didn't, they didn't realize that the environment they created was welcoming to some people, but not to other people. And so when people left and they did do some exit interviews, they were able to find out that it didn't meet the needs of everybody, but they couldn't really understand, well, why would you not want to work here? It's so cool. So I thought that was a really great conversation. That's fantastic. Thanks, Patrice. And uh, I'm noticing Peter Paul wrote in here about the, the, the doorway of vulnerability and as, as an important uh, uh, next step. Any other ideas? Glenn had his hand raised as well. Glenn, if you okay, want to Okay, I didn't see that. Thank you. Glenn. One of the things that we were talking about on, on because you said on the business and personal level, uh, and I think Ellen was so right on when she said that this discussion that we've had today helped her to understand how the relationship with her grandson was, uh, could be changed by her understanding what he values most to, and that she could be flexible. Because in our first conversation, we talked about you know, being able to have the flexibility and how flexibility and adaptability and, you know, and the difference between those two. And so when she said that she could be flexible to be able to do that, because a lot of times we come from a standpoint of understanding where we are and don't take the time to understand where somebody else is with their values. And a lot of times, as, as a lot of us have seen, is that you know, in executive teams, we think that they're all, they think they're all aligned, but when they get their, their assessments back and they realize that they're not, it's a big eye opener. And that's, but when they can understand where the others are coming from within their team, 
then it's that idea that I think somebody said earlier, you know, seek to understand before you can be understood. And we don't take the time a lot of times to, to really understand the viewpoints and the values that someone else has. And so, um, and one of the things that I was on a call yesterday is that the stories that we have about the things we believe in and the stories that we have about our values, when we grapple onto those and, cl and clutch those and not have the flexibility to change those stories or see how we can change those stories, that's when the, we can't be effective as leaders, but we also can't be effective as individuals with people that we, that, that we share our life and love with. That is such a great point, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Seeking first to understand so that we can be open. And maybe because that came up in our in our discussion, too, is clinging to our old stories and our old beliefs often keeps us from being able to understand where anyone else is coming from. And it keeps us in behavior loops that are maybe even unconscious to ourselves um, or certainly don't don't allow us any adaptability and flexibility going forward. Marina. Oops, Back again. So I, I, I echo some of those sentiments, but I disagree with one of them. I don't know who said it. I don't, I'm, it's not about looking for where we disagree. I say, look for where we agree. Yeah. Look for where we agree. Uh, look for flow rather than for drama. Okay, so that's the two distinctions. And the third one is, if I know my purpose, and Peter Paul, you're wonderful in that. You helped me find my purpose. <laughs> If you know your purpose, your values is how you achieve that. But then at a point, letting go to the universe, to the higher understanding source, whatever we call it, to say, if it's not working out the way I want it, there's a good reason. So th that's, that's what's important um, in my experience. That's what works in my experience. I, I thank you for, for voicing that, Marina, and for bringing the, the, the concept of source and, and what the universe is trying to tell us. However, however you identify that, that higher knowing that keeps us on track. As we look for one last share or two, because I am going to get you out of here on time, because I know you all probably got another Zoom meeting to jump to. If you could type into chat one thing that, you, that you're thinking about doing differently, we're and uh, we we're going to summarize and and post some of these things. We'd love to give some meat to the bones for those who are listening to the recording of what is the things you can do differently. So I, I um, do have a rebuttal though because I feel um, it's important awesome, to understand. Kathleen. I think it's important to understand disagreement is not a negative thing. It's allowing people to show up from their perspective, and it's not yeah. looking for drama. It's me saying, this is me, that's you, where do we connect? So I, 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 I'm rebuttaling that um, uh, sort of uh, interpretation that it means drama. What it means is we're different, where can we connect? And that's how values conversations show up when I can say, I don't think I, I don't feel that way. Yeah. And when yeah. I feel safe to say that, my heart opens to transforming. Yep. It's important for me to share that. I appreciate that. And I'm going to both and it because both and is, is one of my thinking. And I, and I don't think it's either or it's like, I do love the coach approach of going towards the solution, but I also love the shadow approach of recognizing what's holding us back. Where are the blocks? Where are the disagreements? So um, I'm going to mediate and, and go right down the middle with both and on that and say, I, I appreciate both of your perspectives. Anyone else have a closing thought um, about what they're going to do differently or um, any kind of any other thing you'd like to share before we, we close off? An hour is too short for these things. I want to express my gratitude for you all showing up, for you all participating deeply, having this important discussion. Um, and uh, one of the things I'll just quickly share is we... We decided we're going to um, focus on one intention, one value for the week, and then find easy ways to put that in to play. And we're going to put up post-it notes on our mirrors and on our screens to remind us of what, what that value is for the week. So there's, there's one idea. Any other thing for the good of the group? Otherwise, we can open up our microphones and hear the caco cacophony of everyone <laughs> saying peace, love, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Great to see you Thanks. all. Thank you. Good day. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.